Seven and under, you don't get tested for reading disabilities. That's a scam. Math disability, that's a scam. Comprehension disability, that's a scam. ADHD, that's a scam. Conduct disorder, that's a scam. Emotional disturbance, that's a scam. Intellectual disability, that's a scam. And why do I call it a scam? Because none of the disabilities I just named can be objectively proven to exist. Did y'all hear what I just said? Nobody can prove to you for sure your son has a reading disability. Nobody can prove to you for sure your grandson got ADHD. Nobody can prove to you for sure your daughter has a math disability. Nobody can prove to you for sure that your nephew is emotionally disturbed. Why do I say that? Because as psychologists, the determination for reading disabilities, math disabilities, emotional disturbances, intellectual disabilities, ADHDs, conduct disorders, ODDs, intermittent explosive disorders are based on our opinion and observations. Right. Opinion and observation. There's very little data. Okay? God forbid, if you got cancer, they can show you cancer. You got diabetes, they can look at your sugar count. If your kidney ain't working, they can show you why the kidney ain't working. If you blind, you know you blind. If you deaf, you know you can't hear. Somebody tell you your son got a reading disability, how do you know that? You don't. You know what a reading disability is? A black kid who's never been taught how to read. You know what a reading disability is? A black kid who don't practice reading at home. You know what a reading disability is? A black parent who don't check reading at home. You know what a reading disability is? A black boy in Baltimore who ain't thinking about learning how to read because he's going to be a rapper and a basketball player. It's about effort and motivation and focus. Effort, motivation, and focus. I've been evaluating children for 25 years. Very few of them actually had an organic learning disability. Most of them didn't have learning disabilities, they had lazy disabilities. Your children are lazy as hell in Baltimore, they lazy as hell in Philly, they lazy as hell in Norfolk, Chicago, they lazy as hell in Memphis. We as a community are suffering from a crisis in intellectual mediocrity. It is okay to be average in black America, which is amazing because everybody you see behind me was above average. Everybody you see up on this wall strive to be the best that they can be. Your children do not do that at all. And guess what's even worse? You co-sign it. Yes, you do. You co-sign it. In three weeks, right after you celebrate the genocide of the Native Americans, and of course, some of y'all think y'all Native American too, but anyway... <laughs> In three weeks, when you celebrate the genocide, don't get me wrong, I got Cherokee in my family. But guess what? If you got four grandparents, and eight great-grandparents, and 16 great-great-grandparents, and 32 great-great-great-grandparents, and 64 great-great-great-great-grandparents, and 108 great-great-great-great-great-great-grandparents, how in the hell are you going to convince me everyone was a goddamn Choctaw? Out of your 108, you might have had four natives in there, but four natives don't cancel out all the African blood. Four natives don't cancel out the struggle of our ancestors. Four or five Native Americans in your bloodline doesn't stop you from being black. You know we're the only people in America that when we find out we got a drop of anything else, we are no longer black. Come on now. When white people find out they got an African ancestor, you know what they do? Shh. You don't tell nobody that you got a Negro in the family tree. Uh -huh. When a European Jew finds out he got a little German blood, he go, shh. But when a Negro finds out he got a little Native American, a little Jew, a little Irish, a little Catholic, y'all act like I hit the damn pick six. This is a damn lottery celebration for black folks. You're so happy you found out you got something other in you than African that you cancel out all the African. And then after you cancel out all the African, you got the nerve to turn around, do a 360, and say, give me reparations for being a slave. Which one is it? Either your ancestors were or they were not. You can't say I was already here, but I want my reparations for slavery. 
but let's get back to the base. Three things go together, they're never separate. When I talk to y'all and I consult with y'all about y'all children, y'all always separate them, but they never separate. Three things are always together. Like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They are disability, psycho, psycho excuse me, disability, special education, and IEP. If you got one, you got all three. See that? If you're in special ed, you have an IEP. Mm -hmm. If you have an IEP, you have a disability. You can't have an IEP without a disability. And if you're in special ed, you're in special ed because you have a disability. And if you have a disability, that means the school psychologist evaluated you and said you got one. So there's no such thing, my son is special ed, but he don't have a psychological evaluation. My son got an IEP, but he's not in special ed. That's a parent who don't know what the hell they're talking about. And you know what's sad? When you call me up and ask me for help with your kid, I ask you, what is his diagnosis? I don't know. Huh? How long your son been in special ed? Eight years. Your son been in special ed eight years. Falling through the school to prison pipeline. And you don't even know what the hell, why. And you had to sign every paper. You got to sign your name four times before we can special educate your child. You got to sign permission for me to test. You got to sign agreement with my psychological evaluation when I'm done. You have to sign agreement with the IEP, and you have to sign the special ed service agreement four times. So if you signed your names four times on a piece of paper in Baltimore City Schools, how the hell you don't even know what the disability is? You know what that means? You sign without reading the damn thing. And black parents, y'all pathetic for that. I'm going to tell you that right now. White folks ain't signing nothing unless they read it five times. Chinese ain't going to sign it unless they read it ten times. You will sign it and not even look at it one time. That's on you. Because we could talk about how Baltimore City Schools is miseducating the kids. Baltimore City Schools have one of the highest vacancy rates in America. All these classrooms without certified licensed teachers. We could talk about all that. But let's talk about the black community and how we do not push a culture of academic success. And you know what's bad about the fact that we don't push a culture of academic success? We raise our children on a diet of material consumption. So help me understand how you raising your son and daughter to worship all the names white people make. Louis, Gucci, Nike, Balenciaga, BMW, Mercedes. This is what you put in front of your kids. You teach your kids you need this to be somebody. And why you teach them that your, show, your clothes got to cost this much and your car got to cost this much and your weave got to cost this much. At the same time, you don't provide them with the academic discipline to work hard enough to get into a position Come on now. to buy those things. Come on, now. Come on now. So if you're not putting them in a position where they can buy the things legally that you raise them to worship, do you know what you're doing? You're birthing a criminal. That's why they're out here killing each other. We the reason. Yeah, the white man engineered poverty. The white man engineered the ghetto. The white man engineered miseducation. The white man engineered economic devastation. Yes, he did. But guess what? We engineered this criminal culture that says this is what you need to have to be somebody, but I'm not going to teach you how to work hard enough to get it legally. Come on now. So what are they doing? Robbing, killing, selling dope, hustling credit cards, scamming automobiles. Why? Because mama, daddy, grandma, even grandma, materialistic as hell, yeah. says this is what you need to be somebody, but I'm not going to make you learn how to work hard enough to get it legal. Come on now. Mm. That's right. We got a criminal culture right now. Somebody just sent me a meme while I'm driving down here from the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, and Woo! a meme said black males in Philadelphia and Chicago have a higher death rate per capita than U.S. troops stationed abroad. We're dying more than soldiers at war. And one of the white man's greatest achievements, one of the white man's greatest achievements was he got the victims to fight each other instead of fighting their enemies. Uh -huh. He did the same thing in a black home. What are we doing right now? Every other YouTube you go to, every other conversation on social media, every other blog and internet show is what? Black man versus black woman. Black man versus black woman. 
We are in a competition to see who can insult and embarrass the opposite gender enough. That's what we're doing now. Black women are on the internet telling the world how much they don't respect black men. And black men are on the internet telling the world how much they don't give a damn about what happens to black women. I don't see no other race doing this. I don't see the Jews doing it. I don't see the Latinos doing it. I don't see the Arabs doing it. I don't see the East Indians doing it. I don't see the Chinaman doing it. Don't get me wrong. They got male-female issues. I was in China, trust me. But they're not putting it on the internet for the world to see it. We're the only people who will glorify and glamorize self-destruction in the public eye. Uh... And then you turn around and say, why are we still talking about slavery? Because your ass still in it. Come on now. That's right. The greatest aftershock of the ma'afa, the enslavement of African people, is it made us comfortable having control over nothing. And then you go to these dysfunctional religious institutions. And by the way, all black religions are dysfunctional. Right. All of them. Your church might not be dysfunctional. But the religion itself is dysfunctional. And why do I say that? Because religions are supposed to be about the empowerment of people. Not just spiritual. But even if you focus on spiritual empowerment, it automatically leads to what? Social, material, economic empowerment. You cannot be spiritually empowered and not have transformed your reality. I want to make sure I'm clear about this. Because some of y'all have been led to believe that you can go to church, get saved, take your shahada, and you got all this religion in your head, and you think that you're spiritually advanced. You're not! Because if you were spiritually advanced, it would show in your community. Jesus Christ was so spiritually advanced. Whether he lived or not is irrelevant. I'm dealing with the metaphor. He was so spiritually advanced that it automatically manifested in the people. Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, Moses, Abraham, whoever you want to name, they were so spiritually advanced that it automatically affected the community where they lived at. What pastor in Baltimore is so spiritually advanced that everybody in Baltimore can feel it? None. None. What church in Baltimore is fighting right now to end police brutality in Baltimore? What church in Baltimore right now is fighting to end hunger? I didn't say fight to give out food once more. On I didn't now. say fight to give out a damn turkey on yeah. Thanksgiving. If you drive in a one hundred fifty thousand dollar car, what the hell is a turkey right. once a year? Right. And y'all will worship him like he did something great because he gave out a stale ass turkey. <laughs> we having our turkey giveaway. Y'all better understand the difference between a poverty program and an empowerment program. Because in the black community, we don't seem to understand the difference. I'm gonna make it real plain. A poverty program is anything I do that makes it look like I'm helping people, but when I leave, they're in the same position they was in when I found them. I give out a turkey, they gonna be in the same position they was in when I found them. They gonna vote, they gonna be in the same position they was in when I found them. But guess what? Empowerment means I transform your reality. You got to change something. We don't need leaders. We need agents of change. Okay. Every last one of you got to become an agent of change in the DMV. We don't need no damn lead. We lead it out. If you wrote down every black organization in America today, you got a million leaders. I would say misleader. You know why? Because part of my definition of leadership as a Pan-Africanist is you cannot be funded by your enemy. Uh, uh, uh. Now, by my definition, half the people you call leader automatically get canceled. Al Sharpton is funded by the power structure. He gets canceled. Tamika Mallory is funded by the power structure. She gets canceled. Now, let's go back. Leader means economically independent, not financed by the enemy or any of his corporations. Now how many leaders you got? That's why we don't get nowhere. You following people, following white people. Come on now. now in 365 days, you're about to go vote again. Nigga shit. You're about to go vote again. <laughs> and they're asking you, who should you choose? Donald Trump, a racist who did nothing for black folks. Joe Biden, a racist who did nothing for black folks. And people tell me that if you do not vote, 
you are reactionary and you're not loyal to the black community. Since when did a bidding between who would be the next slave master matter to the slaves on the plantation? Asking me to choose who I want to whip me. How is that progress? Yeah. It don't matter if I choose that slave master or this slave master. I'm still on the plantation. Why can't black people vote for the things that matter to black people? Come on now. Can we vote against gentrification? Is that on the ballot? Is an inter-police genocide on the ballot? You know, I read an article about Baltimore police. And you know you have one of the highest not only non-black police forces, but Baltimore City has one of the highest non-Maryland ultra-white police forces. Did y'all know that? In Baltimore, they not only not get the police from the community they police, they go to the mountains of Hillbilly, Virginia. They go to Iraq and Iran and get former special ops soldiers to come and work in Baltimore. And for the life of me with all your black city council people. Come on now, speak on that. Not one of them have said, we need a bill. We need a bill that says you don't come and police black people. Come on now. If you ain't got no history with black people. What's wrong with that? But nobody wants to talk against the police because black America is under siege by the police state. In case you ain't been paying attention, we don't live in a democracy. Black people live in a police state. That's why Joe Biden won't speak against them. Donald Trump didn't speak against them. Barack Obama not going to speak against them. Nobody is going to speak against the police. And you want to know the biggest reason why? Police are the most important structure in white supremacy to keep you in your place when they fear black rebellion. Come on now. So nobody's going to go against the police because they need them to protect them from you in the event you get your mind right. And let me be clear. Let me be clear. African people in America are absolutely sick. You are sick. You know why? Because if you were healthy, you would be at war. I want to be very clear about this. I want to be very clear about this. There's no way one out of every four black boys in Baltimore graduate from high school and you planning your Thanksgiving dinner. It's no way it's possible. There's no way it's possible that half the black men in Maryland are unemployed, but you think about what you're going to buy for Christmas. There's no way all these black people are in prison. Black kids being stolen from their mothers. Your Department of Health and Human Services, they kidnapping black kids in Baltimore like they think we still in the damn uh, slave trade. Come on now. Taking them from their mother, putting them in the system yeah. so they can sexually traffic these babies. Yeah. That's all it is, is sexual trafficking and organ harvesting. That's it. Yeah. Why they want all these black kids? Pedophilia and organ transplants. What's the one thing everybody needs that you can't buy at Walmart? A kidney, a spleen, a heart. heart. So what happens when somebody rich up in the mountains of Maryland need a certain kidney and you're the only person with the matching kidney? You know what they do? They create a narrative that you was at the stop and go, getting some black and mouths, got into an argument, and got shot. No, that was an orchestrated murder for your heart. They better wake up and smell the coffee. And now, y'all see what they doing in Chicago and in New York City? Washing black people out with brown people who can't stand their guts south of the border. Yeah. Let me ask this question now. Chicago and New York, the two largest cities in America. Yeah. Most blackest, most yeah. conscious. Yeah. How the hell does a migrant, an illegal migrant, 